This truck popped up on Facebook Marketplace last night, and it was about two hours old by the time I found it. The guy said, pretty good old truck, needs a little bit of work done, and it needs ball joints. And I messaged him my phone number, and he called me back, and he said that the air compressor, the air conditioning compressor, locked up, and so he basically bypassed it. So this thing was kind of a mess when I got it. The power steering wasn't working because he had bypassed the power steering, which means I had no brakes also with it. These huge, gigantic, ridiculous tires and wheels were so huge and, and heavy that they could just completely trash the ball joints on this thing. So trying to drive it down the road was just an absolute nightmare. But I made it back to Greensboro. Let me show you how I made it back. This is Sean and I just bought another pickup truck and so had some interesting adventures with it so I wanted to talk to you about those real quick. So the first thing I wanted to mention here is this guy rigged up this truck because his air compressor went out. So the compressor motor or the compressor down in there locked up and so what he ended up doing is he ended up bypassing that with this whole rigged up system here so you can see the tensioner right there and he also bypassed the power steering pump and on this diesel the power steering pump also su supplies the vacuum for the brakes so the, the truck has no power steering and it has no brakes in this configuration right here so i was trying to drive this thing home last night <clears throat> towing my saturn and it was just it was awful and what ended up happening is I didn't get more than probably five miles or so and the truck turned itself off. And so I think what the problem is, is it's got some trash in the fuel filters. That's what the seller told me. So that's what I'm working on right now is trying to get these fuel filters replaced. This is the fuel filter kit for this truck, the diesel 6.0. That is the part number. This is the lower and this is the upper filter. So let's jump on this. This happens to be where the tow truck dropped the truck. So it won't start right now. I'm trying to get this done. So I've got a wheel chalk back here. The truck is in park and the parking brake is set. So I'm gonna try and climb under here. So let's orient ourselves on where we are here. We are under the driver's seat and we are right there. So that is our fuel, <clears throat> uh, what do they call that? The fuel something or other. But there's a fuel filter in there and then that six millimeter Allen is the water separator. So that's the first thing I wanna tackle here is the water separator. That little plug right there is a six millimeter. You gotta be real careful with it. It's just a little teeny tiny Allen. So let's see if we can get that out and see if we have any water in here.
Okay, and there's the old filter. So we'll take a look at some of the gunk that came out of there. Looks pretty clear down in there. Yeah, there's some stuff coming out of there. Here is the results of my old fuel filters. So this is what came out of the water separator and you can see there's quite a bit of junk in there. That's what I was hoping to see because the, the owner of the cellar told me that there was probably some junk and trash that got clogged up in there and that's why it wouldn't start. So the fact that I'm seeing all this nastiness is reassuring to me that I have actually solved the problem and this thing will actually run. So there was a little bit more junk in with the filters and a little bit of water in there you can kind of see that water right up in there that dark color right there so it's about 40 degrees out here so let's see if this thing will start and cycle this a couple times uh oh Looks like a battery problem. I don't know if you all can see that, but I got some kind of battery problem going on here. Look at that, that battery's got nothing. Dang it. Well, that's probably why the damn thing died last night. The batteries are junk. Never laugh, never start. Stumbling like that. <clears throat> She's probably trying to get fuel back into the into the fuel line, fuel system, I guess. My first step is going to be to get this air compressor, air conditioning compressor back in place so I can get the belts working again and the power steering pump and brakes working again. And what the previous guy did, and I'm starting to realize this guy was kind of, I think he was kind of a hack. Anyway, he put in a dummy pulley right there. And the problem I think I'm about to have here 
is that there aren't going to be any bolts for putting the new compressor in so I'm not sure how I'm going to do this here so let's see if we can get that, that dummy pulley out of there as a first step that bolt was just hand tight I didn't even put a wrench on it alright let's see what else we got going on there we go All right, that was just a dummy pulley. I don't know where the hell he got it from or whatever. But I'm now missing all the bolts to put the compressor back in. So I got a compressor. Didn't even think about not having any bolts. And look at this. Look at this cut wiring harness right here. So I bet that was the plug-in. And the guy just cut everything. He also cut this line here. And you can see it's missing from the filter dryer, so yeah, this truck, man, what was I thinking? So part of the problem here is I'm not building any pressure. So I was looking around and I thought this boot right here was on, but look at that. It slipped off a little bit. Hopefully you can see that right there in the center. So I'm going to try reseating that thing, see what happens. It's not building anything. I think that turbo is probably shot. So one of the major problems this truck has, take a look, is this tie rod end right here is completely shot. So this thing was riding down the road just it was it was terrifying the other thing i want to do while i'm here is get this leveling kit off of here and get the lift off the back as well that red bushing is my leveling kit so i've got the pressure off the front axle i've got the thing on a jack stand and so now i want to take the pressure off this spring and all I have to do that are these little guys. So this is more for struts and not these huge, huge heavy duty coils. So we're going to see if this will do it. In terms of getting rid of this leveling kit here, I have got the truck sitting on these jack stands and they are on the frame and I've got my jack underneath the front axle and I've got it laid all the way, let all the way go here. I have got this brake line bracket bolt loose and out of there and I've also got the strut out of there or the shock out of there so there should be no pressure on this spring anymore so let's see if I can bop, pop that out of there Beautiful. 
So I'm out here, I'm on the other side, I'm on the passenger side. About to get this other shock out of here and see if I can get this leveling thing out of here. Look at how bent that spring is and everything. So it'll be nice to get this, restore this back to stock. And this side, the driver's side here, I already got it back together. That spring is still pretty bent in there, but I may have to replace those coil springs. And I have yet to get the shock, and I just got the shocks. These are Ranchos, and these are just basic. Even though the picture here has the adjuster on it, these don't, don't adjust. So I've had those before, and they're pretty cool, but I never used them, never once. Okay, let me show you where I'm at with this truck. So I got the leveling kit off the front and some factory wheels back on the front. I got the leveling kit off of the back passenger and I'll have to revisit with you what I found. So I have yet to get this one off and get the spacer out of there. But every, 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 every time I touch this truck, I'm realizing that I made a huge mistake buying it. So what just came here today is a new turbo. So there's my new turbo. And I talked to my mechanic friend. And this thing is spinning in here when the engine's running, but we've got no PSI. I checked all my boots here. They're all good. So... He said the turbo is probably shot. So that's what I'm now going to replace. And <clears throat> that, that turbo was 800 bucks. It's a new one. It's not rebuilt, it's factory. It's not anything fancy or anything like that. So that's what I'm gonna try to do now is get that turbo replaced and see if that does anything for me. Come on, baby. You can do it. Okay, I got the turbo in there, so let's see if it, that did anything. Now this is always my least favorite part of doing mechanic work. Because I replaced the part and I'm hoping it's going to work, but I'm not sure. And if it doesn't work, I know I'm screwed because I don't know what else to do. So we'll see if we have any pressure on that turbo PSI gauge. Okay, I'm over here at the passenger rear and I got that big 30, 37 inch tire and wheel off of there. And my goal here is to get this leveling or lifting block 
out of here. So one thing I wanted to mention, I did buy a stronger, bigger, larger jack here. This is from Harbor Freight. This is a low profile rapid pump long reach, so it gets up pretty high. So check that out. I was able to use a couple of blocks there. These are pretty big blocks, but it's still lifted all the way off the suspension on this thing. So I think it was kind of overdue for me getting a, a, a decent sized jack for working on these big trucks. All right, so what I want to do now is loosen this up, these U-bolts, see if I can knock that block out of there, tighten the whole thing back down. I've got the axle supported by this little jack here, and this larger jack is holding up the truck. So it's worth mentioning that whenever you're only supported by jacks and no jack stands, it's okay to work on this stuff, but you can't get under the truck. So if I'm just over here kind of messing around, it's not a big deal, but I'm not going to be crawling up underneath this thing because it's not supported by jack stands and only supporting something by jacks is not appropriate for getting under it. For working on it like this, I'm, I'm okay with it. The one thing you have to keep in mind though, is you have to keep in mind that you're you're not allowed to go under it. So you may be working for a while and whatnot, and you forget that you're only on jacks and you wanna crawl under there. So you've gotta be real careful working with, with only jacks supporting you. So I'm gonna be real careful. I'm a little bit off right there. So I've got to pull this axle back just a little bit as I tighten for that alignment hole to line up. Okay, that was the first lift job for that new jack. Before I get this front wheel off, I wanted to show you what's going on. So the seller said it needed ball joints. To test for ball joints, you jack the truck off the ground and you wanna feel up and down. So you wanna rock it this way. If this rocks this way, your ball joints are bad. Now these ball joints are completely good. So the way this thing was driving down the road, something is majorly wrong here. So we're gonna test for tie rod ends next. To test for those, you wanna test this way. And so let's give that a try. So look at that. Those tie rod ends are shot. So that's what we're replacing. So right there is a tie rod end, and on the other side as well. So those guys are what's, look at that. that. I mean, you shouldn't even be able to move that. That's just completely, completely gone. And that the, this is what will kill you too. So you, you gotta really be paying attention to what's going on here. You can't let those get that bad. So that's what we're replacing. And let me show you really quickly if you're gonna replace these things, you might as well use good parts. So I think that is that outer driver's side one that we just looked at, but anyway, we'll get all this figured out here. Since I will be climbing underneath this truck to get these tie rod ends, I could probably do it without climbing under there, but I'll, I'll be reaching under there. I do have it setting up on jack stands. So I've got two jack stands under here on the frame and 
I've got both rear wheels chalked. So the thing is in park, the parking brake is set, the rear wheels are chalked, both of them, and I've got it up on jack stands. So you really can't, can't be too careful when you're lifting up vehicles like this and working on them. It's not worth letting a vehicle fall on you while you're screwing around underneath it. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to thread that nut back on there like that. But beforehand, you want to shock this knuckle. So plug your ears. Okay, there it is. Now let's go do the other side. The passenger side is a little bit different because it's got this linkage here from the steering wheel. So this tie rod end right here has it's got like basically a big long stud that goes down through too so we're going to be replacing this tie rod end and this one here Okay, it's definitely helpful to have a workbench here, even though this isn't the greatest workbench, and a vise to work on this stuff. This is what it's doing under a load. I've got the gas pedal floored. Gas pedal's floored. I've got a 1102 and an exhaust pressure sensor. I've got a new exhaust pressure sensor on the way and a PO113. At this point, it's pretty obvious that this truck has a lot more problems than just needing some fuel filters. And so those codes that I just got, I had a bunch of other codes as well. And this guy right here, this is called the FICM, the F-I-C-M, the Fuel Injector Control Module. And some of the codes I was getting, I had like 20 some codes for all the different cylinders. And so I looked on there and you're supposed to pull this little access plate right here and test it and you're supposed to have 48 volts. Well, I had 48 volts, but this thing still was not right. And so the parts truck that I was harvesting parts from I pulled the, the FICM off of that one and put it on my truck, and that really, really helped things out quite a bit. And I took the truck over to Carson to get an alignment on it, and he put his really nice scanner on there and found out that cylinders 3 and 5 were not were messed up pretty bad, and so he said it needed injectors on that side, on the passenger side. So obviously this truck has been quite a bit more work than, than the, the seller let on and very difficult for me. So let's take a look. All right, I've got this truck over here at Carson's place and we just pulled the valve cover. It's got a, we think it's got an injector problem. And one of these injectors is just like loose, broken off in here. So I don't know what the heck's going on, but definitely something going on here with this truck. Yeah. 
while I had the truck over at Carson's place, we went ahead and replaced those two electrical connectors that the guy cut off when he cut when he took out the AC compressor and that AC compressor line. So we got that replaced. All right, I just got back last night from Carson's shop and this truck is running really well. So I'm really excited about that. That was kind of a turning point for me is getting those injectors done and seeing if that fixed the problem. So this truck is in pretty good shape now and I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I've got a bunch of stuff left to do on it. I want to, I got to replace that rear slider right there. I haven't figured that one out yet, but I want to do fluids and some other maintenance I need. I got some, uh, some brake pads to do and I've got to replace that rear passenger caliper that the guy ripped off of there and crimped over the brake line. So I guess that's what I'm going to do this morning is try to get that done. So I'm super, super excited about this and wanted to share that with you all. So take a look at what this guy that I got this thing from had done. He had just disconnected this brake caliper here. And so the rotor's all rusty. The, the brake's not even connected, the brake line. And so what do you think he did over here? Look at that. This guy just crimped that brake line over and called it done. So that's just bent over a couple times. And the, the truck still has brakes. It's got three out of four. So I guess three out of four ain't bad, huh? But today I want to, and there's the old one right there as well. So today I've got a used brake line off a of parts truck and a caliper off a parts truck. I also want to address this issue. Looks like something's leaking here. So let's see if we can get these brakes back together. Here is my used brake caliper and brake line. So I guess I'm gonna start by getting the old caliper off. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to gravity bleed these brakes. So I'm gonna pop the caliper off and lay it down here. To gravity bleed this thing, I'm going to fill up my reservoir here and make sure that doesn't go empty. All right, so that's completely full. Leave that right there. And now I'm gonna go crack that bleeder open and then just let it sit there for a while. And gravity should force all the air out of it. Okay, I'm gonna sit there and let that drain down for a minute. That should bleed all the air out. I'm gonna take a look at this differential though while I'm here. This cover just comes off with all these 13 millimeter bolts. And then I'll show you the refill. It's around the front. Oh, 
Well, that's a good sign. Things got oil in it, that's for sure. <clears throat> I've got to get this cover cleaned up really well, so I've got my pickaxe. That's going to help me get this cleaned up. As far as RTV goes for redoing that gasket, Ultra Black works really, really well, but you have to let this sit overnight before you put it back into service. This one is called the right stuff, and this one you can put it right back into service. And so I wanna drive this truck around a little bit today, so I'm gonna be using this one. All right, we'll get this done. Get this caliper cleaned up. You can see how much fluid we uh, bled through there, so that should be good to go. Taking a quick look at our reservoir here, I filled it up a couple times, but the level's right there. So it's below the max and above the min, and it's been going for Let me show you where the filler is on this thing. So, right there. And I think it's a 3 8 ratchet. Yeah. Oh, come on. Clean that plug off. Since I had some new brake pads, I went ahead and was going to check the brake pads on the driver's side rear, but I quickly realized that the caliper was seized up and frozen up on that side. So here I'm just replacing that caliper with a new one and getting those new brake pads in, getting that all done. Okay, the fluid level looks good. So I think we're ready to go. Awesome. This truck has been running very, very well. It's got tons and tons of power, especially with that new turbo on there. And so my other dump truck was stuck here in the yard and it's been there for a little while. So I figured I would use this new truck to try to pull this out and see how it did power wise. So that's what I'm working on right here.
one of the issues with this truck is this bent bumper right here and i have a replacement headlight but which i already replaced this side but the headlight won't come out the way that bumper is bent so i've been thinking about a way to bend this back so let's see if this works the bumpers off the headlight but maybe if I could do that one more time All right, sweet. Let's get that other headlight replaced. Okay, there we go.
getting some new tires on this truck was a huge improvement in the ride quality, but something in the front end is still very loose and I still have the death wobble. So let me show you what the death wobble is. I just got in the front track bar and the ball joint that goes with it. So I'm gonna get those on really quickly here before it gets too dark out here. But I just got back from the tire shop and got these new tires on, so that's pretty cool. So the truck's coming along pretty good. It's still got the death wobble, so this bar and ball joint will take care of that. Here we are under the front passenger and it's this bar right here. And this ball joint right here that is loose. So there's a bushing in here on the other side as well. And that's loose as well. So and so you can buy just the bushing here and press it in, but I went ahead and bought another whole bar. So that's gonna get all replaced. I'm about to still see just how loose it is. Okay. That's a 30 millimeter nut right there. That's a big one. Nice. Just like with the tie rod ends, we're going to shock this right here and hopefully it'll loosen up. Everything I was trying to do to get that track bar to pop off that ball joint was not working. And my spreader fork thing here, it was too narrow. It wouldn't go around the ball joint. So look at how light it is outside. And let me go ahead and save you all the frustration that I had to deal with and show you how I finally got this to let go. I got that on camera. Piece of crap. I had just as much trouble trying to get the ball joint pressed out of there as I did getting the track bar off the ball joint. So let's speed up till the next morning. So if you remember last night, the ball joint press wouldn't fit. So what I ended up doing is I took my angle grinder and I just cut that piece off of there and that allowed that ball joint press to fit in there. So that was definitely a struggle, but getting the right part in there, the right tool, worked pretty easily. Okay, let me show you what's going on here. This was the wrong tool to use for this job. So what I had to do here is I ended up having to take this shock apart and just drop this this axle down a little bit with that bottle jack and that finally gave me enough room in there to get the tool if if this thing right here had been shorter i would have been fine but there was no clearance it wasn't going on straight i couldn't get my socket on there so look at that that guy is in there my light's not very good but there it is that was terrible so yeah all right let me get this thing back together Alright, got 
that snap ring on there. Now, boy, now it's just a matter of getting that bar in there. That should be super easy. You like how I've jinxed myself? As far as getting this bar back in, I figured getting this bolt might be the easier way to go because that ball joint will move a little bit. So let's see if I can get this in there. I might as well get the whole bar. So I got the whole bar. I also noticed that this bolt seems to be missing. So I gotta figure out what's going on there. Alright, that was too easy. Sucker. Okay. okay, I wanted to show you this new jack stand I just got. So look at that, that thing's a monster. 12 ton. So I wanna show that to you next to my other jack stands. But anyway, that's what the truck's been sitting up on, and I, I always leave the floor jack in here too. So I've been crawling all under this thing and just jerking all over it and everything, so you really wanna make sure your vehicle is well supported. All right, check out this new jack stand. Look at that, look at the size of that thing. So that's a 12 ton, six ton, four ton, and maybe a one ton or a two ton. But yeah, that's a pretty big range right there. I wanted to show you where I'm at with this truck. My exhaust guy just put a new exhaust on it. So he got all that, all that exhaust in there for me. So the truck is very quiet now. And it sounds really, really good. He talked about a tip for that, but I don't know why I would need that. That looks fine to me. I'm back under this truck, and what I'm working on today is this steering stabilizer. This is pretty much just a shock absorber on your drag link right here, and it just gives a little bit of dampening to the steering. So I got this guy replaced. That was a, that was a huge nightmare. Of course, now I know how to do it, but that took away my death wobble, that's for sure. Oh, the other thing that's going on here, this bolt right here is missing. So I need to figure out how to get that bolt replaced. I was gonna look and see if there was any threads in there. It looks like there are threads in there. So I need to figure out oh, what size they are and dang it. How to get that done it doesn't look like it's moving around though you would you would see shiny metal if that bracket was moving around so it may not be the end of the world but anyway always something so let's get this steering stabilizer replaced you can also see it's a little bit dented right there and we'll see if it's doing anything or not if we can fork this thing. God, this fork just isn't wide enough to do anything. I should have replaced this when I had this drag link apart the first time. Oh well. 
think I'm gonna put this side in first so I have something to pull against. See if that'll tighten up. Come on. There it goes. Woo. Nope. All right. That should be good. Got that new dampener, dampener in there, steering dampener. These front brake pads are also very, very worn down. Hopefully you can see that in there. So I've got some new pads. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace these. So you can see the pads are just about gone. To push this caliper back and make room for the new pads, you want to open up your reservoir so that your fluid can now push back into the reservoir. And you want a good strong C-clamp. And then you want one of your old pads to push against. So this is where you hope that your caliper is not shot. So give it a good crank, wait a couple seconds, give it a good crank, wait a couple seconds, and continue until that caliper is all the way retracted. If you, just, if you try to just continually crank on it, it's not gonna move. You gotta give that fluid time to move through the system. So far, so good. This one seems to be working. Sometimes you'll get in here and these things will be locked and you gotta replace the whole caliper. I think I'm all the way. Yep. I'm now all the way seated, all the way back. So you can see my calipers are pushed all the way back. My pistons are pushed all the way back in there. And so now I have room for the new pads. Okay, I wanted to show you, there's the old pad, and there's a new pad. So you can see just how much these have been worn down. And you all know how I roll by now, but if you're doing any kind of a job like this, go with the most expensive part you can find. So go with the quality part. You can, they make brake pads that are like, I don't even know, $10.99 for this truck. These were about 70, I think. And so go with the nicer ones and you can't go wrong. Try that. How are we doing here? There we go. Come on. Buddy, get in there. <clears throat> Okay, so those, those pads are ready, they're in place. Now we gotta get our caliper back in there and get some bolts started. Okay, come on, there we go. That wasn't too bad. Bolt to start. Okay, and that's all it is. Okay. 
Okay. All right. New brake pads. All right, let's take a look at the reservoir. So you can still see the fluid went up a little bit, but it's still not too bad. So I'm going to cap this back so I don't forget about it. And then we'll get to this side. Okay, got the driver's side done. Now this thing has four, all four wheels have new pads on them. Oh, and you can see just how much the, the fluid came up. Hopefully you can see that. So we're still good though. Well, I've got the truck here. I'm going to replace the transfer case fluid. So right there is my transfer case. And I've got the truck, I've got a jack stand, I've got the jack, and then I've got this new 12 ton jack stand. And then I've got the rear wheel chalked on both sides. You can see that yellow block. So this is a, I think it's a 10 millimeter Allen. Break free. Let that drain for a minute. That's just automatic transmission fluid. All right, what I've got here is some ATF. And I've got this pump. And this pump will work with either a quart or a five quart jug like this one. So I'll put the link in the description for that little pump. But now we can just pump it right in there. So let me start by getting the plug back in. Just till it stops. Okay. Looks like it took a couple of quarts, came out of it. For a minute. It's pumping. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna move this back a little bit so when it overflows it won't leak all over my hand. Try that. Okay, we changed the transfer case fluid. Things are coming along pretty good with this truck and so I'm going to hook on to my trailer and try towing a piece of equipment. So this will be the first time I have hooked on to this truck. So it should be pretty interesting. This breath. 
bracket is bent right here and so that won't open so let me pull it to the garage and I'll get that bent back out What do y'all think? Do you think that connector is going to work like it's supposed to? All right, let's just try the four ways real quick. Well, that's a good sign. There's one. There's two working. Oh, and look at that. The trailer is charging. You can see right there. Uh, let's do a brake check. <coughs> we'll turn up the brake control box to 10. Moving forward, I hit the trailer brakes. Oh, yeah, they're catching. Look at that. See that? Yep. They're catching. All right, let's see if I can do a little bit of a skid for you. All right, let's go take a look. That's a big deal that those trailer brakes are working. Yeah, look at that. That's a big deal. Okay, well I feel pretty good about that. Let me get this old barrel out of here and we'll get some equipment loaded up. So that drove up there pretty well and I like the way the truck is sitting it's squatting down pretty good in the back but not terribly and then I wanted to show you because I work alone a lot I always put a I apply the brakes right there to the trailer and the truck that way I'm not jerking against the transmission when I'm loading and unloading so yeah I think it looks pretty good take a quick look at it So we'll see how she does pulling it. It's about, it's probably about 10,000 pounds, maybe a little bit more. So I'm excited. These Super Duties have heated windows and if they get wet, it kind of bakes the, the water on there. So when I was backing up, I noticed I couldn't really see too well out of the, the side mirrors right there. The other problem this truck has is it has this dark film on the window, so you just can't see out of the window. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how dark it is. So let's see if we can get rid of that. There we go.
Okay, now you can actually see out of the windows. So let me go do the other side. The truck definitely looks cool with this dark film on it, but it just takes away too much from the ability to drive the thing safely and back up. So it's got to go. I definitely won't look as good rolling through the Taco Bell drive through but now I can actually see out of the windows. Under a load going up a hill, I'm about 20 PSI here, going about 55 miles an hour. So I'm not really big on smashing the gas on these trucks and revving them way up, so I'm fine just kind of poking along. But I've been going about 65 and the truck's doing really well. It's pulling the load just fine. I guess I've got about 10,500 pounds back there and the truck is rated for about 11.5. So you can definitely feel the weight back there. And I can definitely tell a difference between my dually and this single rear wheel. But as far as everything goes, I'm very happy with it. It's, this is kind of a, a maiden pull, see how it does. It's doing really, really well, so I'm pretty excited. So this truck may be a good one after all. I'm down here at Carson's property again. I figured that the fitting first voyage would be down to his place. And we've pretty much stopped exchanging money for because he's been helping me so much with this truck and with my other stuff and I've been helping him so much. It's just like, you know, who's keeping track anymore? Next issue I want to tackle with this truck is getting this rear glass replaced. So I was able to find a back glass from a junkyard. So this is a power slider just like I have and it came out as one unit. The, the only thing going on here is we also have that same film that was on my windows on this back glass window. So I've got to get this out. You can't even see through it. So I don't know how you're supposed to drive with, with uh, all this film on here like this. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is get this ready to remove the old one. So I've got to pull this out, got to get the seat out, got to get the seat belts off. So I'll be working for a minute in here. So take a look at what I've got here. I've got the power unit needs to come off. Those look like about eight. From what I've seen online, you just need a Phillips screwdriver to start prying this gasket out and the window will go out the back. So I don't think the headliner needs to come down. We've got plenty of room. This is all gonna come out as one unit. Oh, I need to unplug it right there. Let me do that. Looks like that needs to come up. There we go.
All right, I've got some 3 16 inch rope here. I think this is nylon. And I'm going to work it into the gasket. Okay, I've got a little pigtail there and there. So now the difficult part is going to be to get this thing set up in there by myself. So here on the inside, I want to use this rope to pull my gasket and seat my gasket over this lip. So let's see if I can do it. Come on. Okay, I think that's it. Gosh, I wonder if that did it. I've got some silicone here. It probably doesn't help that it's freezing cold out here. But I don't know if I got this in here right or who knows. Maybe I won't be using that too much, but it does work. And maybe once it warms up a little bit and that gasket finds where it wants to be, it'll open a little bit better. So yeah, look at that. How about that? Let me get all this crap back together and see how we did. I think I'm about there. exactly how that's supposed to go but we're gonna call it finished now I have been sweating this for a while because I could not figure out where to get the parts and I was talking to a glass company and they they were just very pessimistic about it so they had told me once I located and got the junkyard glass they were telling me between 150 and 500 dollars to install it and they kept saying that they didn't know how, how long it would take, what they would run into. They were basically just telling me that I was gonna pay them to fumble around and figure it out. So I figured at that point I could give it a try. So this has been a little under an hour to get this out and back in for me. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm gonna call this job finished. So I'm pretty excited. I was I was definitely sweating this and not knowing what I was gonna do. So I'm very pleased with how that came out. The fact that I was able to get it done myself. So now my next piece is something I've been wanting to show you all for quite a while. And it really signifies that this truck is pretty much finished. Okay, well that now, I feel like that's a pickup truck now. And I didn't want to put that toolbox on until that window was finished. So I've been itching to get that tool. That was a used toolbox. I put a brand new toolbox on my other truck. This truck, it seemed a used one was appropriate for the condition. It, it, so I got the used one and I've had it sitting here for a couple weeks. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about this truck now. I am back out here working on this truck. It's been probably several weeks now. I've been driving this around. I've been towing with it. It's running really well. And there's a couple little things I want to get done to it. And then hopefully be wrapping this video up. So what I'm working on today is I had just purchased these tie rod ends. I mean, um, sway bars. So I'm going to get those on. I found the bolt for that missing track bar bracket, mounting bracket. And then there's also a transmission filter in there. I don't think I've ever changed one of those before, so I'm going to tackle that as well today. So hopefully this will be wrapping up this video pretty shortly here. Okay, I'm in here. This is our sway bar link right here. And I had this out already when I was doing the lift, removing the lifting kit. So I've got new sway bar links and then I've also got new bushings right here for the sway bar. And then this is that missing bolt for my track bar bracket. So I gotta figure out how to get into that frame. So that's what I'm working on. I don't know why that was so difficult. I'm over here taking a look at this mounting thing and look at that's loose right there you see that gap so I'm hoping that's not stripped out or something's wrong there dang it look at that I wonder if that's even the right bolt man That one too, just loose. Well, let's see if this uh, bushing will come off. Okay, so there's the old bushing, and it's you know pretty, pretty weak. 
I guess it's not terrible. Okay, so this old bushing, you can see that groove in the center of it. And they had that centered on this. And if you look over here, this one is way off. So it's not supposed to be centered on that at all. It's supposed to be on the outside of this little ridge right here. So the bushings I've got are going to work. This sway bar, I guess, was not in here right. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and take this side apart so the sway bar can move around. But look at what just happened here. That thing was on there pretty tight to be able to shear off the bolt that size. God, what a piece of crap. Need to keep those. This I just sheared right off of there. So I guess it was probably time for these. They don't. They are not terrible, but you can move them by hand. So. So now I have room to get this bushing on this side of this little raised area right here, which I think is where it was supposed to be. Which might be why it was loose as well. So that, yeah, see that? Man, I think that's all it was. I was looking at part numbers and all kinds of other stuff. Trying to figure out what was going on. All right, it took. Let's see if we can get the other side to start. I don't know if it will. to move this around a little bit so right now right now this is bumping right here so let me get this one undone and I'll get the sway bar back in position okay I moved this to the the sway bar link to the outside and that seems to be good so everything's all the bolts are started but loose so let me go ahead and tighten everything up Here's that one. Right. And then this one. I don't want to let go. Next, I want to try to figure out this bolt right here. So I've got the bolt from a junkyard. I just got to figure out how to access the frame. Could that possibly be it? <clears throat> no way. I don't know if you can see in there or not, but I can see threads. I can see threads. No, boy, that's a tough one. Let's 
It's tightening against something. I don't even know if that thing is where it's supposed to be or not. I don't think that's quite right, but if I can just send it home and bend that bracket just so it tightens up, I think I might be okay with that. Let's go easy. That bolt, not necessarily the most elegant, but it's in there, and I'm I'm good with that. Whew. That guy right there is some kind of a transmission filter. I've never messed with that before, but I bought a new one, so let's see if we can get it to loosen up. that whoop looks like just a some kind of a filter element now I wonder which way that went damn it I bet it went So I'm betting this goes on, it just fits on like that, and that way it's in place. And then your canister goes and tightens up around it. Oh, and there's an O-ring in there, I guess that's, they didn't give me a new O-ring, I guess that's okay. I cleaned all this surface up. Hey, I don't know what that, that's some kind of transmission filter. I don't know what that's called, but there's the part number for it. And that's a Motocraft. So I don't know. There you go. Just a better shot. So let me know if you know what that filter is called. This truck is looking really good. And I had ordered some, these are the sway bar links, I think they're called, for the rear. And so while I've got the truck in here, I'm just gonna get those dropped on there really quickly. Okay, I've got the truck up on the back here. I've got one of those new monster jack stands. I'm leaving the jack in place. And then I've got, I'm going kind of at a downhill here. So I've got a big huge block under each of the front tires. And the stabilizer things are right there. The other side of this bar is up on the inside of that frame rail right there. So I don't know if you can see that in there or not. I can't see it. I can feel it though. So we'll see. There it is. Look at that. Ok, 
Okay, so before I pull this out, I wanna to try to match up to the new one. So it looks like the new one's gonna go just like that. I've been driving this truck for several weeks now, taking it out on jobs, and it's doing pretty well. So we just finished up with a patio slab over here, and I had the mini bobcat over here for our finish grading. So yeah, this truck's doing really well. After Carson got me pulled off the road, he took me back to my place and we got my dually. And so what we're working on here is trying to get the truck and trailer pulled out. And then we're gonna get the truck disconnected, get the trailer hooked to the dually, get the skid steer dropped at Carson's property, and then get the red King Ranch on the trailer to drop back at Carson's house. All right, so what we're gonna do here is pull the truck forward so that I can get onto this with my truck.
some gas. Yeah. <laughs> That's much better. We should have thought about putting it on straight the first time. Hey, turn, turn your wheels that way. You gotta fall a little bit more. The parking brake doesn't work, remember. Yeah, I think I took the seat one. I guess I'll go ahead and end this video here. I really, really thought I was gonna end this video on a really positive note, but we gotta figure out what's going on. Luckily, we're at the mechanic's place, so it's not as bad as it could be. This has definitely been an interesting job working on this truck. I have really enjoyed it, and as far as the truck goes, I paid 6,800 for the truck. I don't really know what I was thinking. I didn't even look at it, didn't drive it, anything. And so I met the guy, it was about two hours away. It was the middle of the night. He had a bunch of crap in it and it was just, he was kind of trying to clean it out and stuff. And so I think I was just so distracted by how pretty the truck is. And the truck died like five minutes after I left his house. It was terrifying trying to drive the thing. He should never have sent me down the road with that truck, but I spent another 500 on the tow bill that night and then I've probably spent at least a few thousand on parts and pieces, but it has been a very big learning experience. And so what, what do I do when I make a big mistake like that? Well, I've made tons and tons of mistakes like this. And what I normally try to do is try to learn from it, try to do the best I can to benefit from it. And so I already have two of these 6.0 diesel trucks. And so the the knowledge i've learned from working on this one and struggling 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 with it is definitely going to go a long ways towards keeping the other ones on the road and so one thing i'm working on with my white dump truck is it's got a it's got coolant or oil in the coolant and so i just ordered a, a oil cooler relocation kit from bulletproof diesel and now i feel fine with going ahead and tackling that job from working on this truck so getting a lot of experience has been a big deal. And let me know if you all would like to see more mechanic-y type videos like this. So it's been, a, it's been probably about four months I've been working on this truck. And when it's running, I really, really like it. So I feel confident I'll be able to get it running again and it's going to be a good one. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and hope you, you've enjoyed watching me struggle with this thing. Thank you.